Howdy ho, Maplers. We're back with another pre-Battle Mage 250. This time, our third 250, Night Lord. As within the Shadower video, I'm not using my my average equips for leveling 250s because my Meso obtained gear is already on a different character and I didn't want to use more P socks to move him back. And we were already stretching our Maplehood Watch P socks pretty thin already, so we have a few pieces unequipped and a few pieces from miscellaneous places such as my Xenon and just items that were sitting in my storage. But in an effort to keep myself as close to average as possible for my luck classes, I did take off a few items just to make sure I wasn't overly funded. As well, when I originally completed Nightlord, I sold off my old weapon and secondary in an effort to start funding up my second equipment set, which would have been my Kana's equipment set, since up to then I had only been doing luck classes since my only gear set was luck, and creating gear sets takes a lot of mesos. So I sold off the original weapon and secondary, in order to fund my Kana set and branch out from just doing luck classes because I had done Shadower into Nightwalker into Nightlord and I wanted a bit of a break and since I was done with the claw classes I figured ah heck perfect time right <laughs> so the weapon and secondary that I have now aren't as good as the ones I had originally but in addition to like all of the other pieces I've got the stat and the range pretty much where they were when I trained my Nightlord to 250 so for the sake of demonstration, it's effectively the same. For your inner ability on Nightlord, primarily you want to just get boss damage on your first line, but since, hey, I'm just training to 250, I rolled 19% meso and I stuck with it because you're killing a bunch of mobs, right? You're looting a bunch of meso bags. Might as well get some bonus meso out of it. I would have kept drop rate if I rolled it first, but we rolled drop rate, so we stuck with it. For the V-Matrix, Nightlord is actually really simple, but first and foremost, of course, it's right there <laughs> where it belongs. Decent holy symbol. Max it out if you can afford to. It's an amazing skill. Drop rate, EXP, it does it all. As for your boost nodes, you only only have six skills that you want to have boosted as a Night Lord, and those skills are Showdown, Assassinate or Assassin's Mark, Quad Star, Dark Flare, Death Star, and Sudden Raid. Of these, the most important skill you want boosted is your Assassin's Mark. This skill, oh my lord, <laughs> it takes so much funding for this to one-shot, but when it starts one-shotting, it is night and day. Like, Nightlord with two-shotting or worse marks is a shockingly average mobber. Nightlord with one-shotting marks is insane. <laughs> is like a god among men in how easy it is to train as well as how effortlessly you'll full clear the map if your marks are one-shotting. For your skills, you've got your Dark Lord's Omen, which is effectively a glorified loot button. <laughs> uh, outside of bossing, I really only use this skill to loot the map because it's got such a good range to it and it mobs fairly well if you're funded enough that the marks are one or two shotting with it and the uptime on it is almost perfect for you to get around the map and loot everything and then get back into your position for training. It feels really nice and for bossing it does quite a bit of damage as well so it's really really nice. Then your first V skill. V skill that defined Nightlord as the single greatest burst class in the game. Throwing Star Barrage. Holy shit, this thing still dump trucks damage lines like nobody's business. Yeah, Night Lord's still the best burst in the game, undeniably. It's so good. <laughs> Night Lord takes the lowest amount of stat to solo Inferno Wolf from 100 to 0, thanks to this skill. And in conjunction with this skill, it's new V skill, Throw Blasting. Hey, I heard you like burst. How about some more burst on your burst? <laughs> oh my lord. <laughs> I love that they doubled down on making Nightlord the single greatest burst class in the entire game. <laughs> but I was really hoping this skill would be an iframe so that Nightlords could at least do hard boss solos without just having it be I kill you before you kill me types of things. But this skill is amazing. Passively, it helps your mobbing every now and again. Not a lot. It's got a 10 second cooldown passively, 
but it's still pretty nice to use. When it's active though, holy shit. <laughs> this adds so much damage. It's so good. It feels uh, incredible. It just makes Night Lord's Burst even burstier, if that was even possible. Oh, it's a great skill. It also can be used as a mobbing tool. When I was doing dailies on this character to get the arcane force for these videos, I was way, way underfunded for the for the Esper and Morass maps. This thing saved my butt tons of times. It's got a low cooldown, got good uptime, and it does amazing base damage. So you could even use this as a mobbing skill if you need to. I know I sure did a lot. It's, it's really nice. And then of course you have your shuriken. Used to be a kind of a mediocre skill since it had a fixed range to it, but now that you can stop it at will, so you can throw it the exact, exact distance that you need it, it actually feels really, really nice. Now you don't have to like flash jump away from the boss, then throw the shuriken, then flash jump back to the boss in order to do your burst cycle. So it's really, really nice to use. It's still not that much damage though. Thankfully, it's got a low cooldown, only 25 seconds, so that's the trade-off. It's not a huge amount of burst, but it is a nice amount of burst that you can throw out from, like, safety. Because this thing has a really good range to it if you let it go the full distance. And, of course, the true arachnid reflection. You get it for completing the Esfera storyline. Decent mobbing, decent bossing damage, really nice skill to just throw on when you have a slot. And, of course, the other decents. Besides decent holy symbol, you got decent sharp eyes and decent speed infusion. You need one for crit rate and crit damage, and the other to hit attack speed zero while using green pot. And of course, just like Shadower, Shadow Walker and Last Resort are your last two skills here. They're just even more burst on top of already huge burst. Like, they quintuple down on Night Lord being all burst all the time. So these just help it burst even harder. And of course, Rope Lift. Night Lord doesn't have the greatest vertical mobility. You really only have Shadow Web and then Double Flash Jump, so Rope Lift is far more important on a Night Lord than it is on a Shadow or, or a Dual Blade. Probably put this in as soon as you can, but definitely not before you start maxing your Assassin's Marks. Now for Night Lord's mobbing. Like I was saying, Assassin's Mark makes up a huge, huge, huge portion of your mobbing. I would honestly say stay where your marks are one-shotting because that's how you get good rates on Night Lord. If your marks aren't one-shotting, if they're like three to four shotting, Night Lord is surprisingly mediocre at mobbing. But once they're one-shotting, your rates are gonna skyrocket. So for 200 until 205, Eastern Cave Path or Below the Cave, it's pretty much been the go-to for Night Lords since fifth job hit. and. No reason to change it now. This map is still really nice. You can just flash jump through and you can pop your shirt. You can pop your assassin's marks. And then all of those stars floating around will clear the map pretty effortlessly. You just flash jump left, flash jump right, clear the map as you go. Your marks will pick up stragglers. It feels really nice and these levels fly by super duper fast. But as with most of these, I'm not a huge fan of the Vanishing Journey maps. I don't really like Tranquil Urdas. I dislike how small the Lantern hitboxes actually are. And if your marks aren't fully one-shotting, this isn't the greatest map ever. So stay here until 205 because there's better maps at that level thanks to Reverse City. And honestly for Reverse City, for the first time ever, you can go to Hidden Research Train and it feels really good. But I'll also recommend trying the Hidden Underground Train. It has the same feel, just slightly different. This one more so because you can just flash jump in a straight line and clear the map with your showdown. And then your Assassin's Marks will pick up the stragglers as you go. And all you have to do is flash jump across the map, attacking the entire way. Marks will pick up stragglers. If your marks aren't consistently one-shotting those top mobs, you can hop up to one of them drop your flare, and then continue to just do your rotation. This feels really nice. It's a really smooth rotation. It's a pretty good alternative since uh, the Hidden Research Train is finally catching on in popularity, so it's not always going to be 100% burning, so it's always good to have a backup just in case it is, right? And as well, the Hidden Research Train, it's obviously still good. For this one, I'd recommend setting your Dark Flare over here on this platform, because from this platform, it's barely tall enough to hit the mobs up there, 
And then with the flare on that side, you can just stand over here and attack left and right. And you're going to see this rotation quite a few times because <laughs> once your marks are one-shotting, this is really all you need to do as a Night Lord. Just jump attack left and right and you'll effectively full clear the map. It feels really, really good. Now for 210 to 215, if you want to change a page from, rever from Reverse City, Slurpee Forest Depths is honestly still really good for Night Lord. They've had good clear in this map forever now, and it hasn't gotten any worse with new skills being added in. Let's rebuff real quick. Pretty much your rotation is you want to line yourself up here with the corner and set your Dark Flare. That means your Dark Flare will take care of that top platform without you having to intervene, and then you can just jump attack left and right from the middle. And with Frenzied Spawn, it's pretty darn effortless full map clearing. <laughs> <laughs> the only time you won't be full map clearing is if, you're, if your marks fizzle because they chose a target as it was dying and they don't have another target within their reach, they'll just fizzle out of existence instead of going the extra distance to find their new target, which is okay. With a, with a rotation this simple, you can miss a couple mobs, you'll still be leveling super duper fast <laughs> and this will get you to 215 almost with no effort. And oh boy, does the no effort train continue. 215 until 220, I would honestly even recommend until 230. Because as I was saying at the start, it is vitally important to stay where your marks are one-shotting with Night Lord. For me personally, I stayed in Rev 3 until 237 on my Night Lord. Before the EXP lost in Rev 3 was worse than my EXP in Arcana with two-shotting marks. One-shotting marks are that big of an increase to your EXP rates, so stick where your marks are one-shotting. For a hidden billiard field, you want to just set your, your Dark Flare on one side, and then if you have Lucid Soul, set her on the other side. And the same with Shadower. But unlike Shadower, <laughs> Night Lord's even simpler. Stand here in the middle of the map, jump attack left, jump attack right, jump attack left, jump attack right, and by golly... <laughs> It's the most effortless full map clear in the universe. Boys, are you seeing why I recommended training as a Night Lord as opposed to Dual Blade? <laughs> oh, it's, it's night and day how much easier Night Lord is. Albeit with the caveat, you need a lot more funding to do this than Dual Blade's training because marks take a ton of funding before they start one-shotting. Like, the level gap between mobs matters a whole lot more on Night Lord than it does for some classes because any damage reduction is bad. Your marks need as much oomph as they can get to one-shot these mobs. But for the first time ever as well, there is an alternative to Hidden Iliard Field. This map's becoming popular as well, so I would also recommend the Hidden Mushbad Forest. This map is actually surprisingly good as well, and it has a nice little spot for your flare. Just over here on the right in the middle platform, drop your flare, and then you'll be standing under here on the left platform. Same rotation as Hidden Illyard Field, just jump attack left and right. Now unfortunately, these little monkey duders, they're a bit too short for your flare to tag. So, if you have the skill, just chuck your shuriken to the side on cooldown, and by golly, full map clearing! <laughs> ah. God dang. Retesting rotations with Night Lord has been a treat. I'd forgotten just how effortlessly Night Lord can full map clear these areas. It's so, so good. The XP rates through the roof, effort through the floor. <laughs> it's like the Night Lord slogan. And just like that, you'll be into Latchlin or heck, even Arcana. It really depends on your funding. But if you are heading to Latchlin from 225 until up to 237, which is how long I stayed here, you got Rev Place 3. Hey look, another Night Lord! <laughs> this map's always been good for Night Lord, and it's still good even today. As always, stay where your marks are one-shotting. If you're one-shotting in Yum Yum and you're not one-shotting in Rev 3, stay in Yum Yum. If you're one-shotting in Choo Choo and you're not one-shotting in Illyard Field or Rev 3, stay in Choo Choo. I'm not kidding, your EXP rates are gonna skyrocket if your marks are one-shotting. For the rotation for Night Lord, you just set your flare down up on top of the house to stop mobs from clumping, and then you jump attack left and right here. Your marks will take care of stragglers up there on that top right, and as well, anything on the house, you can clear by just chucking your shuriken over at the house on cooldown. 
As well, if you have a Lucid Soul, you could just set her up on the house. It's not as necessary for a Night Lord, since realistically, if you don't have a Lucid Soul and you're only relying on Mark, you can just clear the map yourself with Showdown. And instead of putting your flare on the house, put your flare up there in that top right corner, and then just jump through like you would be doing in the hidden map for Reverse City. You just jump from side to side of the map, and ideally, your marks will be able to clear the house without too many mobs clumping up and taking spawn from the rest of the area. And this map is good all the way until 237. Take it from my experience, one-shotting marks here, insane rates. <laughs> It's very, very good. Until I was losing EXP from these from being overleveled, I stayed here as long as I could because when I was training Night Lord, until level 244, my marks were not one-shotting in Arcana. That's just how much funding one-shotting marks takes. It's pretty insane. You need to be around the mob's level so you're not getting level difference damage reduction, and you need to be strong on top of that. Marks are no joke. But for 225, or whenever you start one-shotting until 250 or even beyond, you've of course got CLP. And as always with CLP, let's hope we can find an open one. <laughs> it's ever the most popular map in the universe, so not the most hopeful of campers here. But it's not the only map Nightlord has in Arcana, thankfully. It's just by far the easiest, <laughs> which is where I trained myself after I was forced out of Rev 3. I would have ideally liked to stay in Rev 3 <laughs> because the rotation is very simple and one-shotting marks feels way better than two-shotting marks, but you can't have everything in this game, right? Eventually you gotta progress. All right, I don't think we're gonna have any luck with Night Lord, but I can mimic the rotation. What you would do, you would set your flare on top here in the middle and then just at the bottom, jump attack left and right, jump attack left and right and have your marks clear the map. And then when you needed to use the loot cycle, just drop down Dark Lord's Omen, and you could walk the entirety of the map. <laughs> you can walk the entirety of the map. I forgot I frenzied him. I was questioning why he said thank you. You can walk the entirety of the map, get back to your starting position, and get back to mobbing. It's very, very easy. But you also have the good alternative of Lower Path 1. The same thing with Shadow Wars. Set your summons on the side. This one doesn't require Lucid Soul, but it definitely benefits from having them. It's even easier than Shadow Earth, to be honest. Since, uh, marks are automatic. It's one less button press. All you have to do, just jump attack left and right, and your marks will clear all the stragglers up on top. This map is very, very good. Even if you don't have a Lucid Soul, doesn't matter too much. Again, you can just throw your Shuriken to the side. You can go clear the side with Death Star, with Sudden Raid. You have tons of options to clear any sides of the map if you don't have a Lucid Soul quite yet. The only downside to this is marks play a lot heavier of a part in this map than they do in CLP. Because with the CLP rotation, your flare is carrying the ever living heck out of you up on top of that map. Dark flare is far stronger of a mobbing skill than people give it credit for. When it's boosted, it can hit two mobs and it does tons and tons of damage. This thing will one shot a long time before your marks do. Dark flare needs some respect. It's an amazing skill. Honestly, you can stay there until 250. I stayed in Arcana until 250 because I was way too weak <laughs> to make any of the maps outside of Arcana better. But for Esfera, if you are strong enough, I'd recommend Mirror Touch C3. This map feels really nice. It's got a very similar feel to your hidden train maps in Reverse City as you're just flash jumping along the side of the map. Set your flare on that platform, it'll take care of those three. If you have a Lucid Soul, drop her on top. If not, no worries, your marks will get up there eventually, and then you just flash jump attack along the bottom here. And even though my marks are two-shotting, this map was still giving competitive EXP rates with Arcana. The only downside, you need quite a bit more funding for your marks to two-shot here. I know when I was originally training to 250, when I got to Espera, my marks were barely three-shotting <laughs> training Nightlord. Assassin's Mark is a very, very weak skill and requires tons and tons of funding as well as like maxing out the boost node for it as fast as you can to get it to do any bit of legwork. But once it starts one-shotting or even two-shotting, it's an amazing, amazing mobbing tool and it'll get you some very good effortless EXP rates. 
10 out of 10 would recommend if you're looking for stone origin droplets or just more EXP. But of course, Esfera isn't the end stop anymore. We now have Celis, and Celis has two very good maps for Nightlord. One of which is extremely popular, the other one not as popular. So pick your poison, right? Plunging Depths 1. It follows the same, <laughs> same vein as half of the maps the Nightlord wants to train at. You'll set your summons up on top, whichever ones you got, Lucid Soul Dark Flare, drop them all, and then just along the bottom, you flash jump attack. And you'll be double platting with Showdown. Your marks will be bouncing off of the dying mobs up into the top to help your summons clear. And by golly, with just three little flash jumps and a few attacks, you're getting from corner to corner of the map, full map clearing on Frenzied Spawn. It feels really, really nice. This map's not the greatest for looting because all the platforms have little holes in them, but it does give very, very good EXP rates. And of course, there's the most popular one. It's SSS1, also known as CLP2. It's obscenely good. It's very, very effortless. It's CLP2. It's also one of the most popular maps in the game already. <laughs> <laughs> it did not take people long to figure out just how OP this map is. It's quite honestly full 24-7. Like, day one of my of my Celis video, this map was full. Oh, thank goodness, we actually find, a f we find an empty one. It is 90% burning, so maybe someone's just in a portal. So we'll demonstrate it quick. Same rotation as CLP. Set your summons on top, however many you got. Dark Flare is the most pri the most important one. And then for this, just line yourself up with this portal. It's pretty much the center of the map, and then just boy howdy, jump attack, left and right. And <laughs> good god, look at the low effort, full map clear. It's like, I'm not strong enough for my marks to one-shot. They are consistently two-shotting though, and this was putting out some insane EXP rates with how minimal effort this is. As well, even better than the COP rotation, if you need to do a loot cycle, you're already right on top of this little portal. Just drop out your Dark Lord's Omen, go through the portal, and flash jump your way along. Loot all the platforms as you go. By golly, it's super easy to loot. There's very, very little mob kill downtime. It feels incredible. Night Lord is by far one of the easiest mobbers in the game. The only downside being you need a lot of funding for Night Lord to mob efficiently, right? Like, it's a lot of funding for marks. It's one of the big takeaways for Nightlord. As simple as the mobbing is, your assassin's mark is a liability as much as it is a blessing. The skill does not do much damage on its own. It, it very much so requires funding in order to pull its weight. Which is why I'm sort of hesitant to recommend people to job change from Dual Blade to Night Lord now, more so than I was when I was suffering through Dual Blade, because I now understand just how much more funding it requires. Because most people are not in my situation where you can just max out boost nodes on a new class. It takes a lot of boost nodes to max out your Assassin's Mark. Like, most people don't have easy access to that many nodes. It is extremely expensive in resources to job change and max out Assassin's Mark. So you really have to weigh the pros and cons for you on if you want to swap over to Night Lord for the much easier training, if you can afford to. Because without funding, if you're like three or four shotting with your Assassin's Mark, Showdown is surprisingly a mediocre mobbing skill. It does have a really good size to it, so you can do some more simpler rotations. And it has a way better hitbox than your Blade Fury, but at the same time, you're trading off supremely good bossing <laughs> for easier mobbing. But it's not significantly better mobbing until your marks start two-shotting. Like, the EXP rates on Night Lord with one-shotting marks are far and above anything that Dual Blade can hope to reach for, like, pre-275+. Night Lord is king of the night king of the thief classes for exp once your marks are one-shotting but if you're not one-shotting or two-shotting with your marks night lord is barely above dual blade in terms of mobbing potential so weigh your options is what i'm trying to get at if you're thinking about job changing from dual blade to night lord for the leveling weigh your options if you can afford to max out boost nodes for night lord 
absolutely swap to Night Lord. <laughs> I'm not trying to say Night Lord's bad at mobbing. It's still insanely good at mobbing, but it just costs a lot to make it good at mobbing. You need good gear, you need to be the right level for your areas, and you need maxed out boost nodes. If you have all three of those, you're good to go. All right, that's it for the Night Lord's mobbing. Oh boy. Surprisingly a lot to say for something so simple, right? <laughs> Let's go to the next simple part of Night Lord, shall we? The bossing. Oh my god. <laughs> if you look up simple in the Maple Story Dictionary, you've got Night Lord right front and center. This class has two modes. Burst and no burst. Quite literally, it's binary. You're either dealing tons of damage or you're dealing no damage. There is no middle ground. Well, I lied a little bit. There's slightly a middle ground now thanks to blast throwing. This skill has a low enough cooldown that you can use it twice in between your full burst with spread throw. So it does alleviate some of the problems Nightlord has for off burst damage, but Nightlord still has a lot of damage problems when not on burst. Nightlord is still far and away the single greatest burst class in the game thanks to spread throw as well as throw blasting, but when spread throws on cooldown, and spread throw has a long cooldown, <laughs> Nightlord is very, very low on the totem pole for damage. Like, Dark Lord's Omen and Shuriken can only do so much for you, baby. Oh god, it's pretty bad. Throw blasting again, it alleviates some of the problems, but it doesn't fix the biggest problem with Nightlord. You still don't have an iframe. Nightlord doesn't have any way to block one-shots for solo bossing, which pretty much means any thief that is trying to do, like, their Genesis questline, they just need to be strong enough to kill the boss before the boss kills them. There's no outplaying one-shot mechanics that are unavoidable. Nightlord has no way of dodging them. Dual Blade has three ways of dodging them, and then a clone on top of that. Nightlord just has, I kill you or you kill me. There is no middle ground. <laughs> I'm hoping, I'm hoping, praying that the 5th V skill, because more than likely there's going to be a 5th V skill. I mean, come on, it just makes sense. A VV. It just, it, it works. Please, God, let it be an iframe. Because currently the only iframe option sh or Night Lords have is from a Genesis weapon. And that's kind of dumb. <laughs> so pretty much the only way to complete your... Your sealed Genesis quest is just to be so strong you can brute force through the boss before you run out of lives. And that's kind of dumb in my opinion. Oh, Night Lord's a very simple class. It takes a lot of funding, but it is surprisingly simple. It's a class I would highly recommend. It is very beginner friendly. It's probably one of the most beginner friendly explorers there are. It's very simple at mobbing. You hit things. Things come out of things. You're good. It's not like 20 different steps to mob. It's not like seven different skill combos for bossing. It's literally just press button, do damage. Yay! <laughs> and for every Ho Young and Blaster in the game, there needs to be a Night Lord, right? We need to have classes that are just simple press the fun button and do damage. Because doing damage is a lot of fun. And oh my god, Night Lord does a lot of damage. <laughs> oh, that was Night Lord. Now I've finally gotten through. And I've done my Shadower and my Night Lord videos. Holy moly, boys. This was about two long months of doing no funding Arcane Force dailies in prep for these videos. And now I've only got two more characters to get to until I have videos for all of my completed 250s. The last two are Nightwalker and Kana. They haven't started their Arcane Force dailies yet because I was cutting myself a little bit of a break. I didn't want to do five characters of Arcane Force dailies, especially when four of those five have no funding whatsoever. I'm talking like when I was doing my Night Lord through Espera, my first, like, half a month was sub sub 8k stat less than 800k range trying to fight as pharaoh mobs it's not enjoyable and it ain't fast like just doing dailies on my three characters took upwards of three hours each day so 
But now that these characters are done, I can finally start on my Kana and Nightwalker. Unfortunately, I don't have a perm teleport rock for those characters like I do for my Explorer's cash shop, so we're going to be walking everywhere for our dailies on those next two characters. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. At least for Kana, she has Kishin. That'll alleviate some of the time for the dailies, but it's still going to take a while. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you wait for those. It's going to be a while. I might like do five days out of the week for dailies instead of every single day because holy crap this is kind of soul draining doing so many sets of dailies each day but hope you can wait for those videos i'm looking forward to getting back to them looking forward to getting back to nightwalker one of my favorite classes in the game held back by a very stupid mechanic but that's a topic for the nightwalker video for for night lord we're pretty much done here Hope you liked the video. As with all of these, if you have any questions about Night Lord, about my journey for all classes 250, about playing in reg servers, playing in reboot, any questions about MapleStory, feel free to ask them down below. I make it a point in these videos to answer any and all questions, no matter when you find the video, five days from now, five months from now, five years from now. I like helping people out. I've played this game for 16 years now. I know a few things. And if I, uh, if I don't have the answers, I can point you in the right direction, hopefully. <laughs> As always, I hope you liked the video, and I'll see you next time.